Hi everyone, I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, and so many of you already know me as Glenda the Good Stitch. First of all, I'd like to wish all of you a very happy Mother's Day. Whether you're by yourself or with your families tomorrow, I hope you have the best one. Today the chat is called Clever Callers Forever. And the reason I called it Clever Callers Forever is because inside the SureFit Designs dress kit, this kit right here, there is a master pattern piece called the Master Pattern Collar Collection. And I think it's one of the most underused pieces that we have in all of SureFit Designs. And I think it's underused because you might not just understand collars as, as well as I hope you will by the end of this chat today. And I'm going to be talking a lot about the, the different shapes that are on here, how to use it, and what changes the effect of one collar style to another. Now, um, as you likely already know, we are doing these live chats once a month, and it's our way of helping to inspire you to keep sewing with SureFit Designs. And um, we welcome your questions, we welcome your input as to what you'd like to see in your chat topics. Um, so when you, when you have an idea that would be beneficial for everybody to participate in, send me a little email that just uh, subject line says chat topic and send it to info at surefitdesigns.com. I read all of the information that you folks send me and I appreciate your comments, I appreciate your questions. And um, as an example, next month in June, the date to mark on your calendar is June the 12th. I will remind you about that again at the end of this one. But it's going to be on darts. And I got a very, very uh, functional question from one of the customers about truing the dart and how you do that when you're beyond an E. So next month's dart, next month's dart, next month's chat is going to be all about darts. And I think you'll all really benefit and gain some more understanding about that. But this month, it's on callers, and please remember to send your questions to me about what you'd like to see involved in a chat. Now, as so many of you already know, during these chats, you have an opportunity to comment in the chat window. We appreciate all of your comments and questions. I would ask that when you have a question, you put the capital letter Q in front of the question. Now, throughout the uh, chat, we do have our international distributors participating, and they will be answering your questions along with my office assistant, Kelly. However, at the end of the chat, I will answer questions. So um, that cue helps me scroll through the, the comments to um, then address questions that maybe weren't addressed during the chat. So please make sure you, you participate that way. Now, I actually have two questions for you. Number one is, what is the definition of a collar? We've got a screen coming up right now that has multiple choice. What is the definition of a collar? There's three choices there, and I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds to read through the choices, and then I'd like you to put, is it number one? Number two or number three? Go ahead and put your answer in the chat window. And let me take a quick look and see what we've got here. What is the definition of a collar? We got any answers coming in? Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, well, in relationship to sewing, the answer is number three. It is a separate piece of fabric that is attached to the neckline and it helps to frame our face. So we can have many different styles of collars. My second question for you is based on page number 23 in your dress kit instruction book. That's called Drawing Collar Guidelines. And there you are going to see the three basic styles or what I've also called the three basic categories of collars. So I'm going to come back and answer that for you in a minute. You don't have to race to your instruction book. I did put that in um, 
the announcement about the caller chat that if you had time, please read page 23 in the Dreskett instruction book. There are three basic categories of callers. So while I continue on, I'm going to give you an opportunity to put your answers in the chat window and then I'll come back and answer that question. Now, while I'm giving you time to do that, the, one of the things that I always talk about in these live chats is what's new. Last month in April, I introduced to you two new fashion leaflets. One was the flared skirt, and it was an asymmetrical opening on the left side, buttons up the left side, and then a pretty little pocket on the right side seam. And then the second leaflet that I introduced in April was the funnel neck top. And it has princess lines going into the neckline, it has an invisible zipper in the front, and it has a two-part sleeve. This month, we introduce to you a brand new leaflet called Hooded Capers. And these last three leaflets, the skirt and the top and hooded capers, were designed for us by one of our customers, DN Artist, who does our um, sew and tell. She did the sew and tell planner, which I'll be talking about in a moment as well. Anyway, Deanne did hooded capers. Now I have to um, kind of give you a little history of why we ended up with a very different and unusual fashion leaflet. In January, one of our customers, Joy Bernhardt, in fact, a lot of you likely recognize her name. She's a customer who absolutely loves Surefit Designs. And I know a lot of you watch her YouTube videos as well. She emailed me and she said, Glenda, do you have any information on designing capes and hoods? And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? She said, you know, they're very, very popular this year. And so that's what I'm saying to you earlier, that if you have an idea or a question or something you'd like to see, make sure you email me because you never know when it's going to end up in a fashion leaflet. Anyway, Joy asked that question. And at the time, I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't have anything at all. But now here we are, what is it, three, four months later, and we do have a leaflet now called Hooded Capers. Last, um, let's see, I guess it was Thursday and Friday, I offered this to all of you completely free as a customer appreciation gift. So that's one more reason for you to read your emails that come out from me, because usually once or twice a year, I like to offer all of you a gift from me, and the reason is because I appreciate you so much. I honestly believe that I have some of the best customers in the world, and I like to thank you. So, Hooded Capers was the gift, and it was Thursday and Friday last week. Now, this particular cape, the way Deanne designed it, was to have a short front and a longer back. So the front graduates down to a longer back. If you don't like a short front, well, that's absolutely fine. Make the front hem length exactly the same as the back hem length. Um, the other thing that you can do is make it out of a totally different fabric. Deanne chose to sew hers out of a medium weight denim, which is perfect for spring and fall weather. But I know that if you're in the southern climate, you're going into winter right now, maybe you'd like to make yours out of a wool. And if you want to line it, we also give ideas and tips for lining in this leaflet as well. So um, enjoy it. It's a great leaflet. And I know that you're going to have some fun making that one. Now, our fourth new item is, and it's also a digital fashion leaflet, it's called the Simple Summer Shirt Dress. And this dress is in really kind of interesting because it's going to combine together your shirt kit on the top, and we take the skirt pattern from the dress kit and join them together at the waistline to make a dress. And that's why I've called it a shirt dress. It has a, a number of different neckline treatments, which I'm going to show you as soon as I stand up. And it's a perfect way for me to segue into teaching you about collars, because you'll see some collar options for this dress. Now, any of you who would like to purchase uh, any of our digital sewing patterns, you can go to any one of our websites, go to the Shop tab, scroll down until you come to Digital Sewing Patterns, and then you'll see 
our four new leaflets should be on the top row there. So have fun. And you know, these digital sewing leaflets, the whole purpose of them is to help you continue sewing with lots of different ideas to utilize your SureFit Designs kits. Now, another way that we encourage you to use your SureFit Designs kits is in our Sew and Tell program. And for those of you who are new and haven't joined us before, what does Sew and Tell mean? Well, it's like the name suggests. We encourage you to sew it and then tell the world about it. And we ask you, once you've got your garment sewn with SureFit Designs, to take a photograph either on yourself or on a mannequin and then post them in our private Facebook group. And then, once a month, we are doing a random drawing and rewarding those of you who participate in our Sew and Tell. And so this month's winner is Charmaine Bannister. I happen to know that Charmaine is in Australia. And right now in Australia, it's about 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. So I don't anticipate that she's watching. But what her gift is, is to choose one of our four new fashion leaflets. So Charmaine, thank you so much for participating in our Sew and Tell. I encourage all of you to do this. And the only thing that I ask you to do is when you post your photograph in our Facebook group, please put on the hashtags Sew and Tell or and or Me Made. Because then what Kelly does is we go through and sort the um, uh, photographs and the only way we can sort them with any kind of um, logical sense to it is to use that hashtag to sort them. So she looks for Sew and Tell and Me Made and then we just do a random drawing. And the reason is that um, she, uh, we don't judge you on, on uh, construction, obviously. I can't see how you've sewn it together. And we don't judge you on the design that you've, you've chosen. Lots of you are very creative and are doing your own things, and it's absolutely wonderful to see. So this is one way for us, again, to encourage you for being in, inspired with SureFit Designs and sewing lots of different garments that you know are going to fit you. And that's the whole purpose of SureFit Designs. Okay, so um, the next thing I'd like to talk about, and, and again, those of you who have participated in our chats previously, know that once a month, generally speaking, once a month, we do some kind of a promotional event. And this month, it is called a Build Your Own Combo. Now, a lot of you, again, know that we already have discounted combos within SureFit Designs. And we put together specific kits and specific essential tools and a video and that kind of thing. And you might say, but I don't want that. I prefer to have this. And so once, um, once I was going to say once a year, but I don't think we did this last year. This is... Um, only happens occasionally that we say to you, all right, this is your opportunity to build your own combo and put the items that you want into a package that are going to suit you and your family's sewing needs. So what does build your own combo mean? Well, we encourage you to choose one of the pattern kits. So go to the category pattern sewing kits, or all of us have called it something very similar in our websites. Choose one of them, and then go to the category of DVDs and choose one of them. Most of our combos already include the how-to DVD, but this is an opportunity for you to add in one of our um, specialized fitting courses like the pants, dress, or bodice fitting course. Or maybe you'd like to know more about fitting commercial patterns. We have a specialized DVD on that. Very recently, I've been talking with a number of ladies about making their own jeans, and we have a DVD called Jeans Behind the Scene. So you can pick whatever DVD you would like to put into your combo. Another category, a general category that we have, is called essential tools. Now for essential tools, we put in things like 
the designing stylus, which I know so many of you already have. So what else consists in, uh, in our essential tools category? Well, we have tracing vellum in two different sizes, 18 inches wide and 24 inches wide. You never go wrong with getting that because you use it, of course, while you're developing your patterns. Another essential tool that all of us are carrying is this easy check tape measure. I'm not going to go into um, how to use it right now because I think some of you have already seen how I use it, but on the page that's for the easy check tape measure, we all have the video on how this is going to give you hands-free measuring when you're doing all your circumference measurements. I go in and out of stock of this, and I know some of you this past week have been trying to order it from me, and I ran out of stock again. This comes from Europe, and it does take a while for me to bring in stock, get it here, etc., and get it up on my website again. So I just got a new supply last night, so that is also one of the essential tools. Of course, we also have our line drafter and our essential removable tape. So you choose what you'd like to have in your build your own combo. And then there's one other category that we encourage you to choose from, which is the fashions beyond slopers. So that category has the digital fashion leaflets in it. It has our designing books on pants, bodices, and shirts. And then in the United States, in order to qualify for a build your own combo discount, which is 15% in the USA, you need to have a minimum purchase of $100. And then when you get to checkout, you're going to add the coupon code BYC15. Okay, that's build your own combo 15. Now, the only items in the website that don't qualify to get an additional discount are the items that already say combo or that have already been discounted. And that's because they've already been discounted, okay? So anything that is not already discounted, put it in your shopping cart and then use BYC15 at checkout. Now, all of our international distributors are participating in this particular event. It's just that some of their discounts are going to vary from the United States and some of their minimum purchases are also going to vary from what I'm offering in the United States. So please make sure you read the newsletters from your distributors and look at their website because it will be explained on their websites. And this promotion is good through midnight, tomorrow night, um, and of course that's Mother's Day. So it's our Mother's Day promotion and gift to you as well. All right, so now I'd like to move in to the lesson on Clever Callers Forever. And I asked you a question, which, were, uh, which was, what are the three main categories of callers? And let's see if I have some answers here. Um, Oh, and you know, the other thing that I wanted to say about this collar collection is that I don't see any answers yet. Did anybody try and answer what are the three main collar categories? I'm trying to find it here. Um, let's see here. I don't see... Anybody attempting to answer? Okay, well, oh, there we go. Flat, rolled convertible, and standing. That is absolutely correct. Okay, so it wasn't a trick question. Uh, Kelly put this up in our Facebook group, and she called it a pop quiz. She also told you what page number in the instruction book in the dress kit to, to go and find the answers. But now I am going to talk specifically about each of those collar categories. So let me stand up here and go to the collar collection here. And uh, I know where I was um, mentioning that this is found inside the fifth and the sixth edition dress kit um, package. Now, for those of you who have older uh, kits than this, 
If you need to buy just the collar collection, you can do that. I know that uh, in Australia, they have um, under their shop tab, they have a, a spare parts collection because we've got a lot of customers in Australia dating back to the 1990s who are very active in SureFit designs. And they don't have all of our most current things. So look inside your dress kit before you just automatically go and purchase it. On the USA website, if you go to my uh, general category called patterns, pattern fitting kits, I think is what I called it, I will have the collar collection there for you to purchase individually, but check your kit first of all to make sure you've got it so that you don't have duplicates. Anyway, let's go back and look at these three collar categories now. We have flat as one category. That's this one right here is the flat Peter Pan collar. Then we have a rolled collar, which can be buttoned right up to the neckline or it can be convertible, which means open up at the neckline. And then we have a standing collar. And I, I'm going to show you examples of all of these and how easy they are to use on your necklines. Now on the reverse side of this um, uh, collar uh, pattern piece, you're going to see the instructions for how to draw off the collar. And the video that we're going to show you at the end of this live chat is on how to personalize your collar. And I'm going to show you this in a video format. It's barely 10 minutes long. Make sure you stay and watch that because you're going to realize how easy it is to draw these collars to fit your neckline. All right, so let's now go back to the dress that I have on display because this is the... Uh, the fourth leaflet that I showed you today, and it's called the Simple Summer Shirt Dress. So you can see that it's belted. I'm going to remove the belt, and then we're going to look at how this was constructed and how I put it together. <coughs> excuse me. On the top, we have the shirt from the... <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to grab a drink of water here. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so we've got our shirt kit on the top, and again, as I quickly go back over to this wall, you can see that I've got the shirt kit displayed here, and then we're going to use the skirt from the dress kit and join it together at the waistline and cut it all as one. So we'll go back to the dress now and see, so this is shirt kit on the top and the skirt from the dress kit on the bottom. On the top, I have uh, drawn and cut on a kimono style of sleeve, and it's got a slightly curved underarm here. Now, if you have a bust dart already in your shirt kit pattern, and I know lots of you have put that bust dart in for a better fit, please make sure you leave it in the pattern and then just cut the kimono uh, curve around that or underneath it, or I guess I want to say beside it. Okay, coming down into the side seam, I'm going to put my hand into the inseam pocket. So you've got an inseam pocket option here. Where you get the directions for this inseam pocket is actually from the pant kit. And um, we also give you directions in the leaflet on how to draw that, but if you want to copy it right off a master pattern, you can do that from the pants kit. This is a pocket that sets right in the seam allowance and it's barely visible. Then I have also put a 24 inch long invisible zipper in the back of the dress. If you don't like putting in invisible zippers, you could do a center applied zipper. And I have scooped the neckline just slightly and I have faced the entire neck edge. Now I have um, put some costume jewelry on here which was a, a very nice combination. But now I'm going to show you some of the other options that we can do with this dress. Now, I did design a collar that is an independent collar that'll just go around your head. And this was cut on the bias. The piece was approximately 13 inches wide. So in half, that's about six and a half inches. And it was 28 inches long. 
Again, cut on the bias so that it created a nice drape. It's got a seam there and a seam right here. Now, I've sewn that in a contrasting solid color, but that makes a beautiful alternative instead of putting on costume jewelry. But if you want to, you could also put collars in place. So now we're going to take a look at the flat or Peter Pan collar. So I've done this one out of self fabric and this is what it would look like, like that. Now, of course, you're not just going to set the collar on the neckline and expect it to stay. I'm doing this just for demonstration purposes. So right here, if we can get a close up of this, you can see that here is the seam allowance and I just stay stitched it at 5 eighths and then I surged it so I didn't have a lot of raw edges there. Now that, of course, would be initially laid onto the seam allowance of the garment, then the facing would go on top and then the facing would go inside as it would enclose the entire collar piece. I'll actually be showing you that on the mannequin as we go on in the demonstration. So that's one done out of self fabric and then I did a contrasting fabric in white and this is also considered to be a flat collar because it lays flat to your shoulders, to your chest, and to the back of your body. And again, there's the same thing. There's the seam allowance right there. So that's how that one would look. It changes the look of the dress completely. And then I also made a belt that is white on one side and then the uh, fashion fabric on the other side. And this looks really pretty with this contrasting color of collar. Let me just get this tied in place. And if the camera can get down here and show how this looks really pretty with the white side now hanging down on the dress. So you get this beautiful contrast of the white on the belt coming up into the collar. So you've got lots of options for this pretty little dress. And then the other thing that I want to tell you, I didn't do it on this dress because I ran out of time, but if you wanted to do some crocheted belt loops on the side seams right here to hold the belt in place, we have instructions for doing a crocheted belt loop and you just need to go to our learning center. So that's sfdlearningcenter.com and go to the um, sewing section, and there you're going to see me showing you how to crochet a belt loop that you could put into the side seam, and then your, your belt will stay in place. Now I'm gonna show you one other thing that I think would be kind of interesting too, is you could do a combination of self-fabric and a contrasting color, and really make an interesting design for your dress. So our simple summer shirt dress really has a lot of variation and options when you start putting it together. Okay, well this is a perfect, perfect segue into looking in depth at our collar collection here. So right now what I have been talking about is this flat Peter Pan collar and showing it to you on, on our dress. Now the white collar that I've got on there on the dress right now all I did for the front of that is extend the front point out and then I came in with my designing stylus to make a big deep curve right here. You can see we've got three different collar shapes on the front of this, but I made my own on the, on the front of this dress. Now, what makes this a flat collar? What makes it um, uh, close to our neckline? Well, what it is, is that when you have a curved neckline on the collar piece versus a straighter neckline, when this neckline is curved and the outer edge is curved, that is going to make that uh, collar lay flat on the dress, all right? When you start to, I'm gonna go back to the collar pieces here. When you start to take this neckline shape and straighten it out, that will force a straight piece of fabric 
on a curved neckline to go up and then roll over. Now I know this isn't perfectly straight here and that's because I've accommodated for our necks getting thinner up at the top than down here. So there's a little bit of a, um, a wedge to get rid of it so, it so that it sits nicely at your neckline is what I want to say here. But just assume that was totally straight. When it gets sewn onto the neckline, here's what's going to happen. So let's take a look at some examples here. And on this jean jacket, this is a rolled collar, this one right here, and the collar center front is going right to the center front of the jacket. So this buttons all the way up, and that's what the collar looks like. But it is called a rolled collar because here we have the straight edge of the collar piece being sewn onto the curved edge of the neckline that forces the fabric to stand up and then roll over like this, okay? So let's take another look at a rolled collar that is not convertible. Now, here we have center front. If you can see in this wild pattern that I've got there, I've put black buttons. If I run my finger right up the center of those buttons, this is coming right almost to the center front here. Now the reason that, that this wouldn't uh, close like that jean jacket is because instead of having a round neck on the front, I put a V-neck on the front of this blouse. But again, follow this up. It can almost close perfectly, which is another example of a rolled collar. If we take a look at the back neck on this, I did the collar in contrasting color. There's black. It is stitched onto the neckline, stands up, and then, if I can grab this in my fingers, rolled over like that. Okay, so that's another example of a rolled collar. Now we're going to look at the rolled convertible collar. And this is a really excellent example of that. In those two first blouses I showed you, or tops, the collar was sewn right to the center front. In a convertible collar, so rolled actually has two variations. One is rolled and the other is convertible, like I'm showing you right now. We stop the collar back about an inch to an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half back from center front and then we press open and form a lapel formation on this. I'll show you another one of these. A rolled convertible collar is this one right here and here I instead of doing it in contrasting fabric I've done it all in the same fabric however I have added piping at the center front um, on the button extension and on the collar I've added piping, but also an excellent example of a rolled convertible collar. All right, so we've taken a look at the flat collar on the dress. We've taken a look at rolled convertible collars and regular rolled collars. Now we're going to take a look at the standing collar. Now what makes this a standing collar is that it does not come up and roll over. And so this is often called a mandarin collar, which is this pattern piece right here. The only difference between this mandarin collar on this little jacket and this mandarin collar is that I made this collar wider. So I just brought my front up in more of a curve like that, and then I came over to the back and down, okay? It's just a wider one of those. I'm going to show you a few more standing collars here. This is one that was done uh, with a outerwear fabric. It's a rainproof fabric. And I've done the collar in black on the front side and then the self fabric on the inside. Again, this mandarin collar pattern piece is what was used. And this jacket, this is our cargo jacket. And this is also one of our digital fashion leaflets. Again, these are found in our digital sewing pattern category. And this one is done from the shirt kit. This is an example of a standing collar. I've done a straight edge on the front. It's intended to stand up at the neckline and not roll over. 
And yes, of course, this has interfacing in it to help keep it nice and stiff so that it's standing up. One last one I'd like to show you is the exact example of this Mandarin collar, which is what I've put on this reversible vest. This is also one of our digital sewing patterns. On the inside, I've used fleece, and on the outside, I've used a novelty fabric. And this particular design line is the princess line. The bus start was turned into the princess line, and then I top stitched this with my cover stitch machine. And here's the mandarin collar. You can see that it's just dropping right off, and it meets exactly at center front. All right, so now we're going to go on to the next variety of collars, which is the collar stand and collar, much like the blouse that I'm wearing right now. So as we look at this, there's the collar stand, and here's the collar. This is actually the long-tailed big shirt. And so it's made from the shirt kit. And where you're going to find this, this is actually a design and sew along that is found in our academy, sewfitacademyonline.com. Here's another example. I sewed these out of two different shirting fabrics, but this white one is identical to the blue one that I'm wearing. So here you've got the collar stand and the collar piece that goes onto the stand. So in this case, it's the stand that is holding the collar uh, that goes uh, you know, around your neck at the back. Now this blouse here, this one is done from the dress kit. So this pattern piece right here, this collar stand and collar is this one. And here you've got, again, a princess seam going up into the shoulder. And this is also a digital fashion leaflet. This is the um, princess blouse. And here, what happens at this top button is that you get a V opening like this. So this is never, ever going to meet. It's not intended to because I V'd this open. But, and, and I'm also, this is a kind of a very wild print, so I hope it's not too difficult to see. But there's the collar stand right here which is this piece, and this is this collar shape right there. So when we start thinking about these kinds of collars here, the neckline becomes straighter, and the upper edge of the collar becomes shorter. And that's what makes the collar stand up at the neck and then roll over. Okay, I've got one more collar uh, style that I would like to show you because it's a little bit different from what we've got on these pattern pieces. And this one is called the shawl collar. And so this is all cut in the body of the, of the bodice front. And then you get a little chunk of this extension coming up at a kind of a strange angle that then wraps around the back neck. And it's any time you see a collar that has a seam at center back, that is designating that it is a shawl collar. And I've put that same or similar collar design on this jacket. Again, the telltale sign that it is a shawl collar is that it has a seam at the center back. And where you get directions for doing that particular um, collar shape is in the dress kit instruction book, and it's on page 46. And I actually show that taupe colored jacket that I just showed you. Many different collar options are found on the front of it because once you have that extension for the wrap of the shawl, you can make whatever design you want in the front of it. And you can see with these collar um, options here, I've given you many different shapes of designs for the front of the, of the collar. So it, it just means that you've got lots and lots of flexibility. Okay, so now we are going to go over to this mannequin and I just want to lift it more into the line of the camera here. And we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty here and I'm going to show you on a unfinished neckline what some of these collar shapes would look like. So I've just got a basic blouse here. This is designed off of the dress kit. 
And I have just put a stay stitching line here. I've clipped to the stitching so that it, it shapes better to the neckline, of course. That's why we clip to the stitching. At center front, which is this line of machine stitching, for a blouse to be functional, of course, you need a button extension plus a facing, either a cut-on facing or a sewn-on facing. Now, I didn't put this, that extension on this blouse because I didn't want all that fabric flopping and getting in my way. But let's take a look now at how we can um, put some different collars on here and really help you to understand the, um, the functionality of a collar and what makes them so different. So this one's cut out of the same fabric and here you can see, I'll just hold this up to the white here, that little notch right there is indicating the shoulder line. So you're always going to have some kind of a notch either cut inward or cut outward like this that will match up to the shoulder seam line on your garment. And then this particular collar is designed to start right at center front. So I'm going to start pinning this on and as if you were basting it in place before you added your facing. And I'm matching up that shoulder notch with the shoulder seam. And I'm just going to bring this a little ways around to the center back. And then I'm going to turn the mannequin so that you can see what's happening here and what forces a collar to stand up. So I'm turning this around. I hope you can see this. So we've got the curved edge of the neckline, but I have a straight edge on the, on the collar piece itself. So as I start pinning that straight edge onto a curved uh, uh, edge, see what's happening here is it's forcing this collar to push up. And I'm going to do one more addition here before, and it's also pulling this back at center front. And as soon as you've as you've uh, stitched this all, trimmed, graded, and clipped. All of that then allows it to sit properly. Now, here's a facing. I cut this facing out of a, a printed fabric so that you could really visually see the right and the wrong side of it. So I'm going to take the right side, because this is how you would sew this on. I'm going to take the right side of the facing and I'm going to line that up right at my center front. And I'm going to put a few more pins in here. And you also notice that this facing had a curved edge exactly the same as the curved edge of the, um, of the neckline of your garment. And that's because it's going to lay flat on the inside. And I'll show you this in just a moment as I get one more pin put in here. Okay, so now we take the facing. Of course, you sew it along here. You take the facing, and you're going to turn this all to the inside. And the facing will lay flat on the inside. The collar will come down at center front like this, and the neckline starts to stand up against the garment, okay? So that's one example where the collar is going straight to the center front or matching right on the center front. Let me do another example here, and I'll do it out of a slightly different color so that you can really see the difference. So that meant this one with the collar going right to the center front. I'm just going to pull this real quickly is an example of this jean jacket right here, okay? Which is the one that buttoned right up to the neckline. That's this collar example. All right, let me get these pins out. And I'm going to be reaching in front of this mannequin here in a moment to get the other one. I'll get her all pulled back into shape here. All right, let me grab this collar. So different color of blue, 
you'll see that the shoulder notch is right here. Now this one from the shoulder to what I'm calling front is shorter than that blue one. And what it means is I'm going to match the shoulder seam line first of all. And again, because this is a straight edge on the edge of the collar going on to a curved edge of the neckline, it's going to force it to stand up and then roll over. But notice on this one, it does not go all the way to the center front point. And that's because I'm going to want it to turn back into a little bit of a lapel. Let me get my facing piece put in place here. Oops, I need to put right sides on there. It's always right sides together um, when you're putting a facing in place. Okay, another pin here. And then I will turn this again for you so that you can see it a little bit better. Okay, I'm turning it. How does that look, cameraman? Is that good? More? Okay. All right, now I'm going to put the collar inside. Or I didn't mean collar. I meant the facing inside like that. And now it's going to get turned like this. I, I feel like that's not, is that, am I getting you guys to pick that up? Is that okay? All right. So that's what forms, where did it go? This kind of neckline, okay? That's what forms this kind of neckline, is to do what I'm just showing you right there. Again, once that goes inside, it's gonna force that collar to stand up at the back and then roll over. And then you are going to press that lapel open so that this uh, lays open properly at the neckline. Because when you have a convertible collar, you are expecting it to um, be pressed open at the neckline. All right, one last one that I want to show you here. And again, pardon me while I reach in front of the mannequin. Um, this is the mandarin collar or the standing collar. So there's my shoulder notch right here. And I'll pin this one in place here. And this one goes to center front. I've got that a little bit off base there. Let me get center front lined up first of all and then match the, match the shoulder point. So it's going to sit like this and come around this way. And I want to bring this far around the back neck as I can. All right, and then the facing would go on top. And you know, while I'm pinning this, I should let you know that um, if you don't want to have a facing all the way around the neckline uh, to finish it off at the back neck, there is another process, another technique for using the seam allowance of the collar, of the back of the collar, that it will then, you don't sew it in place initially like I would be doing right now with the facing and enclosing it. And it leaves one section of the back seam allowance open on the collar and it comes over and encloses the seam allowances. I hope I haven't confused you all too much with that, but where you are going to find information on sewing a collar with that back, back neck treatment that does not have a facing is in our Make It Sew DVD series. And I just wanted to mention this real briefly. It's on, um, it's on disc number four. I know a lot of you already have our Make It Sew DVD series. And disc number four is uh, showing you this process for attaching a collar that uh, does not have a back neck facing on it. It's a real nice clean technique to use. But if some of you are thinking about the Build Your Own Combo, which is our event special for this month, this Make It So DVD series is an excellent one to put in there. Even if you're an advanced seamstress, you know, I've had people say they've been sewing for 50 years and still learn new techniques when looking at my, my processes that I show how to sew things together. 
I don't make a garment in this. I don't like it when you go to a, um, a learn to sew um, lesson and you have to make exactly that dress or that blouse. What if you don't like that dress or that blouse? What I do here is I show you conceptual information, how to do a collar, how to do a zipper, how to do a waist elastic, and then you can apply it to whatever the garment is that you're, you're sewing on. So that's our Make It So DVD series. It's got some really, really good lessons in it. So I want to finish off with this Mandarin collar. So now this facing would go to the inside and you can see what's happening here. It's making that collar stand up around the neckline. And I'll just turn this again to the camera. Okay, we got that? Alrighty, so I really hope that me pinning and unpinning and doing all of this on the neckline has given you a better idea, not only of how to put a collar on, not only of where is a good place to use collars, but also how truly creative and, oh, what do I want to say? It, it's, it's creative and it's fun to do this. And you've got so many different collars here on this collar collection that it's, it would be just wonderful to see you using the collar collection as it was intended and having some fun with it because you've got lots and lots of opportunity to make different styles of collars. Okay, well, I am going to sit back down here and we're going to be going into your questions here relatively soon. I just wanted to really quickly review for those of you who came in late the uh, Build Your Own Combo event uh, promotion that we have going on this month and it's our Mother's Day special. And what we're encouraging you to do is decide what items you'd like to have within SureFit Designs and put them together as your combination and get a discount on that. And in the United States, your minimum purchase is $100. Please remember, already discounted combos are not included uh, for additional discount. But we've got kits, we've got all kinds of essential tools, um, tracing vellum, our new easy check tape measure, our DVDs, and lots of opportunity for you to put together the pieces that are really going to help your sewing and your fitting. Okay, um, I have a very, very special request of you. This is something I'd like you all to do, and you can do it now. In YouTube, Underneath our videos, there is a red subscribe button. I would like you, those of you who are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I just want you to go and tap that red button right now and get subscribed to SureFit Designs. Apparently in YouTube, the more people that subscribe, the better our algorithms are. And what does that mean? It means that when you're searching for sewing help and videos in YouTube, that SureFit Designs will show up more regularly. So I ask that as a favor to me, if you would all kindly do that and just tap that little red button if you're not already subscribed, and I would really appreciate that. Okay, so let's go in. Do we have any questions? Let's see. Um, Okay, this is a question. Are the Make It So DVDs the same as the digital series in the Academy? No, it's not. It's completely different. That was from Cindy Gross. It's very different. We don't have the Make It So DVDs in the Academy. Um, do we have any questions on callers? Here we go. Okay, here's a question from Maria Thacker. I'm not sure I actually understand this. She says, when adding the seam allowances at corners, my seam allowance is too wide. How do I compensate or what am I doing wrong? Well, Maria, I'm sorry, but I don't understand exactly at what corner you mean. Are you talking about the corner on a collar or a corner somewhere else? 
or are you talking about using the designing stylus for adding your seam allowances? I, I guess I would just have to ask you um, what corners you are talking about, and if you have an opportunity to put that back in the chat, if I can see that, I will try and address it. I've got a question here from Sue M. What about a collar neck cowl? <laughs> Excuse me. I got my tongue all tied around my teeth. What about a cowl? No, that, she said it right, and I, I guess I said it right, a cowl neck collar. All righty. Um, what that is, is the bus dart, the side fitting bus dart, gets converted over into center front, and then it gets opened up, and then there's an expansive amount of fabric that is added above at the neckline. And then that all drapes back down into the front. I know that's um, a very general way to talk about the cowl neck. However, we do have directions on doing the cowl neck, and you're going to find them in our designing book called Beyond Bodice Basics. And um, then we also have a digital fashion leaflet called the High Neck Cowl. And so there's two references for you to get that, okay? And you'll see center front, or excuse me, you'll see the dart opening up in center front. And in fact, mark your calendars again for June 12th where I'm going to be doing darts and I'm going to actually show very quickly moving the dart into center front. And it'll be a very quick discussion on, on um, that uh, opening up into a cowl neck. Just a minute, Harry. Um, okay, Marianne Keynes asks, if you are a tiny person, do you reduce the collar size relative to your stature? Traditional collars can look overpowering if you have a narrow body. Yes, absolutely, Marianne. Just because I have made the collars on the collar collection this wide or this wide or this wide, you can do whatever suits your body frame, of course, you're going to take the neck edge of the collar and bring it in. So you absolutely have the option to change collar designs and shapes. Um, let's see, what have we got here? Uh, this is from Linda Bobby. Uh, the question is, do you use self-adhesive interfacing in the collar? Um, is it best to use or sew in? Linda, I always use iron-on interfacing. And sometimes I'm happy with the results and sometimes I'm not. Depending on the quality of that iron-on interfacing, sometimes it can bubble up and... Um, almost destroy the look of the fashion fabric. So I always recommend buying enough yardage of the iron-on interfacing that you can take a sample and test it on your fashion fabric first. And then it would be a good idea if you could do like a six inch square test, get it all pressed in place, then go and wash it and let it dry, just like you'd treat that garment afterward and see if that interfacing is going to bubble up. And I use iron-on interfacing, I guess, because I'm a little bit on the lazy side and I don't use the sew-in interfacing, not unless I have to, but it certainly is an option to do that. The other thing that why you always want to do a test of your interfacing on a scrap of fabric is because you want to see if it's giving the fashion fabric enough body or too much body. It's, again, depending on the uh, garment Um, this is from Maggie Warman. Glenda, what is the advantage of a two-piece stand and collar over a one-piece uh, collar that includes a stand? Well, I am just going to jump back up, and I'm going to go to camera number one here, and we're going to take a look at the, this pattern piece right here. This is a, here's our rolled collar that's convertible without the collar stand. Let's take a look at this one right here. Rolled collar with attached stand, and here you can see the stand right here. Versus 
these two right here, the stand as a separate collar, uh, a separate piece to the collar stand. What is the difference? This one will give you superior shaping at your neckline. It will sit better. And why will it sit better? Because you can see that right here it says matching notches to collar stand, matching notches to collar right here. So this is a curve this way, this is a curve this way. When these two get sewn together, it's going to give better shaping for the collar to lay around the back of the neck. Versus this, it will be adequate on your neck, but it won't sit and shape as nicely as this piece will, okay? So that's an excellent question, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, all right, here's a question from, um, I'm not sure who it's from here. When Maybe it was sent in ahead of time. Um, I'm going to jump to the question before that. I'm trying to keep on top of these. From Sharon Kane, do you post a list of all the questions asked and answered for all your chats? Sharon, no, I'm sorry, I don't. That would be exceedingly time consuming. But I'm glad you brought that up because you can always go back to all of our replays of our chats. The chats are all free. They are in YouTube. You just use exactly the same link as you use to come into the chat today and you can watch it and listen to it as many times as you want to. Okay, when I sew the collar band, when I have to hem it to the collar stitching, it never meets no matter how careful I try. And this is from Kath Littler. Um, one of the things that you might not be doing, Kath, is making the under collar a little bit narrower than the upper collar. And that's on the stand, the stand as well as the collar. I didn't talk about this earlier, but when you are cutting a collar, because, because the underside, we don't want it to show, you can narrow the collar of the under collar by an eighth of an inch on the top edge, and that helps to pull that under collar in and roll to the inside. And it allows the upper collar to have a little bit more length. So if you're having trouble covering a seam, just cut that edge an eighth of an inch longer to allow for what we call the roll of the cloth. And that should certainly help uh, when going to uh, sew it together. Okay, from Esther Hoplin, do you have to grade the rolled collar so that when you sew, it doesn't lift up? When you, do you have to grade the rolled collar so that when you sew, it doesn't lift up? Which side should be the shorter? Oh, oh then I basically just addressed your question, Esther. Which side should be shorter? And Oh, no, I didn't at all. <laughs> Sorry. When grading, grading, that's the seam allowance. Um, you're going, first of all, remember the under collar is going to be that hair bit smaller than the upper collar. And when you grade, you're going to grade the seam allowances so that, um, I'm just trying to think it through here. Um, if that gets folded, I think that you grade the, the, uh, the edge of the seam allowance that faces the right side of the collar is the seam allowance that should be left the longest. So that means the under seam allowance for the under collar is going to be graded the shortest. And that's so that your upper seam allowance, being the longer one, will graduate when you press it and it doesn't give such a ridge um, when you're in the finished garment. I hope that made sense to you. It's the under collar that you're going to grade the shortest. Um, let's see if I can answer this one. Valerie Evans, on a mock neck top, the back neck seam 
slouches to a bump or a roll at center back. The mock portion is straight, but the bodice neck-like sinks down. Would making the center back curve smaller help? Well, Valerie, I read your question out. I don't understand what you're asking. Um, I think this would be a good one to send to your distributor. If you're in the United States, I am your distributor. And if you've got a picture of it, send it to me. And that way I can help to troubleshoot that a little bit more effectively than I can guessing what you're trying to say here in the question. Um, I'm trying to read these questions here. Here's another one from Teresa De Jong. Will understitching the outer edge as far as you can into the corners accomplish the same as making the under collar smaller? It doesn't accomplish exactly the same. Understitching helps to hold the seam allowance in place, again, to help the roll of the collar. I do both. I grade the seam allowance of the under collar shorter, I understitch, and I've also made the under collar smaller than the upper collar. So if you do all three of those um, functions, then your collars should roll nicely. When collars don't sit properly, it's usually because the upper collar is sticking out, meaning it wasn't smaller than the upper collar, or the seam allowance hasn't been grayed, uh, trimmed, graded, and clipped, or the understitching hasn't been performed. And those are the main culprits of not getting a collar to lay nicely. So it's not in lieu of, it's as well as is uh, what understitching is for. Okay, this is from CD Vax 11 question, how do you get the collar stand and the front of the shirt to line up? Oh, that's a good question. I always end up with a lump there at the shirt front uh, when I turn it. What she's talking about is this bit right here, the collar stand meeting with the edge of the collar on the front of the, of the garment. And you can't avoid a lump you have to realize how many seam allowances are in there. But what I do is on my collar stands, I don't cut them exactly the same length as the neckline. I cut it anywhere from a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch longer. And once again, that allows for the roll of the cloth and all the bulk that's going to be inside there. If you cut this collar stand exactly the same length as your neckline, you're going to not have a pretty neckline at the finish because you're going to have too much bulk there and there's no room for all those seam allowances to sit. So do yourself that little cheaters thing and make that collar stand just that little bit longer. Um, let's see. Oh, um, this is from, from Kay. She says, if the interfacing isn't included in the seaming, how do you keep it to stay in place after washing? Well, again, as I was commenting about uh, iron-on interfacing, I use it almost all the time exclusively in my garments. And um, it, I, I test it and make sure that it's not going to wash out with, uh, with washing on it. But if you are using a sew-in interfacing, then you have to sew it to the under collar, not to the upper collar, okay? And that will keep it in place. So just make, uh, be aware of which collar piece you're sewing it to. Um, Delise Burns asked, do you sometimes clip the collar edge seam allowance before pinning so that there is some ease before stitching. Sometimes I do, um, but not always. 
And I guess it depends a little bit on the fabric. And if it's not, if it, if it doesn't have any give at all, then there's a possibility I might clip it once or twice. But usually, because that collar um, piece, I might clip the neck edge. Let's see, what am I going to clip here? The collar is straighter, the neck edge is curved. There is a possibility I might clip that seam allowance of the collar first. But I usually try to do it without clipping. And I just make sure in my pinning that I have pinned really accurately on a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, there was also a question that was emailed to me this morning. And I, I think it was a Dolores that asked the question. Dolores, I'm trying to recall the question. I've forgotten it. So if you're watching the chat and I see your name here, please make sure you ask it again. Um, Bernadette Dezine asks, what is the best fabric to use for your first shirt blouse with collar? My favorite. Well, on any of these shirts, um, like I've, I've got right here, this is a man's shirting fabric. It's 100% cotton, it doesn't stretch, and it's going to give you a nice crisp look. Another fabric that would also be good in a shirt is the um, uh, Symphony Broadcloth that I like to recommend for our test garments. It's 65 poly and 35 cotton, and typically it's a Joanne product, so you can find it there. It comes in solid colors. It has no give to it. It would also be excellent for a, a first shirt. You don't want anything with stretch in it, not when you're doing um, a, f a more formal style of collar like I have on right now. Okay, Bonita Harms. The collar patterns are a standard size, but let's say my neck is two inches bigger, how do I determine how to make a collar fit my big neck? Well, I'll tell you what you're going to do, Benita. You're going to watch the last 10 minutes of this video when we stop the chat, because that's where I show you how to measure the neck edge and how to mark the differences on the collar pattern pieces. You will be extending them out longer and I go over all of that in that lesson. Now, if you can't stay for the last 10 minutes of this chat, the link is in the show more notes underneath this, um, this video, and you can go back and watch it at any time. So, excellent question. All right, Sharon Kane, when you cut iron on interfacing for the collars, do you cut the interfacing the same size as the collar or slightly smaller? Excellent question, Sharon. I never put my interfacing in the seam allowance because I don't want the bulk. So I will, for the sake of convenience, I will cut the interfacing the same shape as the collar pattern piece, and then I go around and I cut the 5 8 inch seam allowances off. If you want to take a little bit more time, then draw yourself an interfacing pattern piece from your collar pattern piece and draw it without seam allowances, and now you've got your interfacing piece. Um, Llewellyn Friars asked, do you iron the interfacing to the upper or to the lower collar or both? Well, usually I press it onto the under collar, and that's just in case I do end up with any little bubbles from the iron-on interfacing. I like my upper collar to be nice and smooth and clean fabric. It's rare that I interface both the upper and under collar, but if you remember that cargo jacket that I showed you with the stand-up collar, that I interfaced both the upper and under collar because I really wanted that collar to stand. So part of it depends on the function and the final appearance of the collar. Okay, um, 
Elsa B. made an interesting comment. Elsa B., of course, as many of you already know, is our South African distributor. And I'm just going to read this out for everybody. She says, in South Africa, we have a paper interfacing and a fabric interfacing. When sewing clothes, it's best to use the fabric interfacing because the paper interfacing makes bubbles when washing. So I've been talking about that as throughout this chat. You've got to be really, really careful about that. So a fabric interfacing is always going to be your best choice. Okay, Valerie Evans says, where do you add that eighth inch extra length to the collar stand. Valerie, I add it right at the center front, right here, okay? That's where I go. And an eighth of an inch is your absolute maximum. So if you can go back in between a sixteenth and an eighth, you would be amazed at the difference it makes in rolling and getting that collar stand in place. All right, well, I can see that there's still more questions coming in. Um, and I also just took a quick look at the time. It's already after 12 o'clock. I have talked for, gosh, an hour and a quarter. And um, i just like to say, again, thank you so much for staying and participating. And I really, really encourage you to stay and watch our short little video because it is going to show you how to draw off all the pattern pieces. Well, not all of the pattern pieces, but once I've shown you how to do it, you're going to understand. I show two different pattern pieces, and it really is so super simple to do that. And again, we are trying to make this an inspirational year for you. That's why we're doing these live chats once a month. And um, next month, mark your calendars, uh, June the 12th, it's called the Heart of the Dart. I will be talking about the bust fitting dart and all of you ladies who are beyond an E, this is going to be the chat that you want to participate in because I'm going to be talking about you as well as all of the people that are regular size and I'm going to be showing you some differences in the bodice and the darts and how it fits and the effect on the side seam. I'm also going to be showing you garments that have darts in different places. So I know it's going to be a real, real fun chat to participate in. Again, I'd like to wish all of you a very, very happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much for participating today. And stay around, watch that video, and I will see you in June. Hi everyone, my name is Glenda Sparling with SureFit Designs and today I'd like to introduce to you the newest component to the SureFit Designs dress kit and it is the Master Pattern Collar Collection. You know, up until now, when you've wanted a collar for your blouse or your dress, you've needed to draw it and the instructions of course are in the dress book to do that. Well, with input from my customers, we've gone ahead and created a master pattern collar collection so that you can draw off your collars even that much quicker and easier. I'm going to show you how to draw these collars off. But first of all, what I need to do is just explain a little bit about the different categories of collars. There is flat rolled and standing. A flat collar means that that collar is going to lay flat against your shoulders, like a Peter Pan collar or a sailor collar. The outer edge is really wide so that it will lay flat on your shoulders. Then there is the rolled collar, and that's often called a convertible collar. That's where the collar comes up against your neckline and then rolls over, and some of it still lays on your shoulder line. 
Convertible collars are called that because they can be button closed or worn open. And then there's the standing collar, and that's like a Mandarin collar, Chinese collar, or even a turtleneck. Even with a turtleneck, the high one, when that upper edge is the same circumference as the neck edge, when it rolls over, it's still never going to lay on your shoulders. All right, so what's the first thing you're going to do? Well, you need to measure the neckline of your bodice. Now that neckline that's on the master pattern bodice front and back, that's the high jewel neckline and that just stands or stays, or sits right at the base of your neck. But when you go to add a collar, you're likely going to want a little bit more breathing and swallowing room and you're going to want a little bit of room for the turn of the cloth on a collar. So what you're going to do is take a look at your bodice front and your bodice back. You can join them together at the shoulder seam and this gives you a little bit better perspective of what to do at the neckline here. Now you can lower it an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch all the way around. You could lower the front and not the back or you could lower the back a little bit and then the front might you know, it might be lowered a half to five eighths of an inch. It just all depends where you want that neckline to fit on your body. You might even want to make a slight v-neck and then your collar extends from that. So then once you've got your collar or your neckline modified in terms of length, then what you'll want to do is take your tape measure, stand it on edge and take an accurate length measurement of the front neckline edge and the back neckline edge and record those two length measurements independent of one another. And then we'll take a look at the collar collection. There are a number of different collars for you here to choose from and a, a number of them have different front options on them as well so there's lots of choices here. There's the Peter Pan collar and now here's the collar for the stand and a collar stand much like the blouse that I am wearing. Then there are two more standing collars over here, the mandarin collar and the standing winged collar. There's your rolled convertible collar and a rolled convertible collar with an attached stand. So there's lots of choices. Let me show you how to draw off, first of all, this winged collar, this standing winged collar. It's kind of a fun one to do. So I'm going to have my stylus handy, but first of all, I'm just going to start tracing this just freehand. And at home, if you're more comfortable, make sure you use your designing stylus to do this. I would actually come back afterward and true this all up with the designing stylus or perhaps with the designer's companion. Now what I'm doing is I'm drawing up towards the shoulder notch. That is the original shoulder notch on the master pattern. And what I need to do is I need to measure how much distance I've got from that shoulder notch to center front. And on the master pattern, that is four and a half inches. Well, let's just say that your front, line, front neckline uh, length is five inches. So I know I need to extend that out one half inch which is what I will do right there. That's going to be my new shoulder notch and then I'm going to continue drawing like that. Then you take your tracing vellum and shift it over on top of so that shoulder notches are now lined up. Now you're going to do the back end of your collar, the back side for your back neck. And I will draw this out to the back neck that's on the um, collar itself and then I'll measure. From center back to the shoulder notch on the pattern is three inches. Let's again, for the sake of example, say that your back neckline is half an inch longer. You're three and a half inches there. So I'm going to bring this out a half an inch there and a half an inch here. Then all I do is shift that vellum over on top of the master pattern like this and then connect the center back. Now, all of these directions for doing this are actually on the reverse side of the collar collection. These collar patterns do not have seam allowances on them. So in order to cut it out and sew it together, you need to now add seam allowances. So you just take your handy designing stylus that has the seam allowance slots and use it for adding 
the seam allowances. And of course you would do that all the way around. And again, please notice that I am drawing this off in a bright colored pen so that you can see what I'm doing. At home, make sure you use a pencil so that if you need to erase anything that you can. And all of these collars are on, uh, have center back on the fold of the fabric. If you want just a one piece collar to do your layout and cutting, then just obviously trace that off a second time and flop it to the other side. All right. All of the collars are that easy to draw off, but I would like to show you just one more, and that's this Peter Pan collar. In this circumstance, this right here is my neck edge, and this lower edge right here is the outer edge or upper edge of the collar. Now, once again, you do need to measure to see what the length of the collar Stitching line for the neckline is on the front, and this is four and a half inches long. Again, for the example, we've said your neckline is five inches long. So I'm going to bring this out a half an inch more and line up that marking with the notch on the shoulder on the collar pattern, and then continue in this fashion, and then I'm going to, well, I'll just freehand up to the back neck. Again, if you're more comfortable, please make sure you use your designing stylus to do this like that. Now, measure that back neck curve. This is three inches long, and we know that yours is three and a half inches long. So I'm going to extend out the back neck half an inch on the top and the bottom area here, then just shift that over on top of the pattern and continue drawing and there's the center back on the fold of the fabric. And there you have it, a Peter Pan collar done to your exact neckline size. Keep in mind, one last thing to do is to put in your seam allowances on that inside edge and of course the outer edge of your collar pattern piece like this. In closing, I would just like to thank each and every one of you for being our customer. You know, it, it just really gives me no end of pleasure when I open up my emails and I'll see a note that says, remember when or remember me, and it will take me back 25 years of when I was traveling around the world giving seminars and presentations. And you'll remind me of something that I said or a design that I showed you how to do. Over the years, more and more people have been using SureFit designs, and I, I truly am grateful for you as our customer. And I just hope that each and every one of you continue to use SureFit designs to get the best fit possible that you can for your body shape and size.